What's up guys? I'm Matthew Kelly and this is John the Potter's YouTube channel and he is here in North Carolina at my studio and we have a gas kiln here with a bunch of cool Mako test glazes and some other pieces in here. We're getting ready to unload and we wanted to bring you along. What's up guys? Let's do it. So if you've been tuned out of the John the Potter channel for a while, I've been in North Carolina and this might be like a third or fourth video about this trip. But while we were here, while we were waiting for the wood kiln to cool down, And it looks dope. There you go. Oh, well, like, well. <laughs> we glazed a bunch of pots and fired it in the gas kiln up to cone 10 reduction. Mako was not kind enough to send Matthew a bunch of glazes that I used right. to in the electric kiln. And so we are super excited to see yeah. what comes out. We comboed a bunch of them and it's gonna be cool. Yeah, I had no idea that their glazes would go to cone 10. Of course, I actually fire this to like cone 11, but still. Um, yeah, I purposely, I threw like 24 tumblers the other night, like late one night, just so I could have glaze tests on my clay that I normally use in this, uh, in this kiln. And then we also did some Mako tests in the wood kiln, so we yeah. got, yeah, a lot of stuff. But this, I'm super excited about it. I'm so jacked. I, I'm maybe even more excited about this than that, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, Probably not, not. I'm more excited about that. <laughs> but anyway, so now, here we go. Let's do Open it. the door. We'll let y'all see first, right? That's how we do this. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah! Is that the blue on there? Yeah, it is. It's kind of purple. I think, uh, yeah, I think because it wasn't like jam full, I don't think it got as good a reduction as it could have. We, we were talking as we were loading this, and he was like, is there an advantage to like giving them more space? And I was like, well, sometimes in reduction, you don't want a lot of space because it changes the way that the kiln fires. But cool. well, this shelf here is full of the Mako test. Still a little warm up top. It, was, it fired faster than normal because it wasn't completely full, and it's cooled a little faster than normal, so. There we go. So these ones are all cups that I brought. Ooh, that red looks nice in there. I can see it. That red is awesome. So this is on B clay. So a clay that I typically would use. And then these are all the Mako ones back there. Yeah, I'm, I'm still very excited. Like some of these colors down here look super cool. Uh, I see some crystals that are pretty amazing. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. I mean, these are cool up here. They don't look like my normal pieces. Like, of course it is a different clay too. That's right, this is your clay. Right. That that's, makes a difference. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I think this uh, rutile on um, this B clay it's like this super cool purple. Uh, I did my copper red and my purple over and under my white glaze. That's, look at this, dude. Look at, look at that. Yeah, that's sweet. That copper red with the white. Like this is that purple that we were just talking about. It's super cool. I can see the difference in why you painted on versus. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling John the whole time, I'm like, listen, I like to take this glaze and dip it and then paint a little bit to get the varied edge. And he's like, well, I'm gonna try it my way. And I'm like, hey, it's a good, that's a good idea. Which, that's, that, that's, that's me painting it on. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, well, that one looks good. <laughs> well, that looks so super cool. That red is like awesome. Yeah, so here, here's what we're talking about. See this, the line of white there, which is not bad because you still get the red drip, right. but this one just looks more melted into yeah. the red and yeah, more yeah. drippy. But that red, that's... So, this is a vase that didn't fit in my last gas firing, just with the blue and gold. So this is on a different clay, so it turned out more oh, blue yeah. on that yep, clay. That's it, yep. That looks a lot like mine right there. Yep. Yeah, so this is the same color combination we were just showing you guys, but on a different clay, so it uh, looks a lot more like what I normally get. Yeah, those glaze the same way. Clay makes a huge difference. If you guys haven't realized that, the kind of clay you use can make a huge difference in the outcome of glazes. A couple more that were left over from my last gas firing. There's a purple and blue and a red and blue. I should have done a bit more of that on top of that. Gorgeous. That's a really, really good glaze. Matthew's kind enough to uh, let me put some of his glazes on my pieces. Wow, that's super cool. So these, I am gonna sell these pots on my next restock on April 11th. Um, and they will be pretty much one of a kind for me because I, this won't ever happen. So if you guys like these glazes and these colors, I'll sell them one time, but after that, you gotta get them from Matthew. When's your next re restock? It'll be the, well actually most of my next restock will be wood-fired pieces, uh, end of April. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, so same yeah. thing. If you see yeah. the wood fire pieces yeah. come out like mine, and you like, you'll have to get them from him. So here's my white and blue. Super sweet. Uh, more more purple, and this one's pretty blue. So do you think it turns out more purple if there's less reduction? Like. Um, well, I think that's I think that's the clay body. Yeah. Yeah. I had a couple pieces in here for a guy that helps me wood fire. He brought some pieces over to test fire, so I got a couple of these by Francis in there. So This is another one of Matthew's glazes. Obviously, most of them are. I guess Mako has them too, but then it has, we sprayed this ash glaze on, which oh, we did yeah, get some. Oh yeah, look at that rutile on the inside yeah. of that. Woo! I told you, yeah, it would bleach it when I sprayed the ash over it on the outside. It doesn't turn blue, it just gets shiny. Yeah, so, yep. yeah that, that one's gonna have to be refired for sure. Which that'll be really interesting to refire it at like cone seven or something. That white is really nice. Yeah, it is, it's a really nice glaze. It pulled out some of those flecks in there, that's from the iron in the clay. Look at me, I'm so smart now. After hanging out with Matthew for four days. All right, this is the shelf of Mako test glazes. Here we go. See some good and some not so good already. That might have actually turned out fine if we just, Let they were go. a little wet, you know? Yeah. Like we Some of them when we did two layers, we were in a hurry, so we didn't let them dry before Which, we did the second layer, so. That one is, that is a really cool glaze, whatever it is. I had 27 different things, 27 different pieces that I put tests on, uh, and so, and then John had some others that he uh, did, so he, uh, hopefully he had notes on what he did. I know we, I like, I took a bunch of video of myself on my phone where I was like, this is this, and this is, I think this is this, and this, like, so, uh, I may have to, I don't remember it all, so I'd have to like refer back. All right. So let's, yours are much so better. Let's, let's do this. All right, what's number 23? Number 23 is Winterwood and Green Tea. Winterwood is first plus green tea. So this is, yeah. a, I do this one in electric a lot. So if you can see down in there, that's winter wood. That's actually like my whole kitchen set at our house is green Aurora tea. Green over uh, winter wood, but green tea is the base yeah. glaze of Aurora Green. So. so I, and then all of these tumblers, I sprayed my ash glaze lightly on the bottom so that we could get uh, uh, just a finished look on the bottom. But that's pretty cool. I, I mean, it'd look better without the ash because that combination there where it drips into the other one. Right. That is cool. Because it kind of got rid of the... But I just wanted to have it finished on the outside. So. Right. All right, what is number 16? CM plus Norse Blue. Uh, okay, so this is um, That's one, of, one of the layering glazes I use. It's uh, Strontium Crystal Magic. It's one of the original recipes that um, Stephen Hill created. And then I put it on first and then put Norse Blue on the inside and on the uh, on the rim on the outside. That's pretty sweet. That's, that in, that's really cool. And there's pretty I like nice. that a lot. That SCM is a money glaze right there. This one is Norse Blue over Norse Blue over Winter Wood, which that turned out pretty good. This is number 20. Sandstone plus green tea. That's another one that I do a okay. ton. Green tea over sandstone. So you can see on the inside there, sandstone and then the green tea over top of that. Which I'm pretty sure this is the green tea over sandstone on my B clay. Yep. Which yep. Is it? It you? I can it's brighter. see. It's brighter because the clay's not as. Yeah, and I can see how it looks kind of similar to when I do it in electric. I actually might like it on my in my electric a little better. Yeah, I do. I think I do. <laughs> I mean, it's cool, but it does lose a little of its like intense color intensity. All right, so this must be just a single. Straight so that's up. just straight up Norse blue. That's a pretty glaze. This is just straight winter wood. Look at how, yeah, it's shiny. It's got little crystals in it. Of course it's, uh, oh yeah. But my little, my, mine is so much whiter. I gotta see. Find. To be honest with you, like when I see winter wood on yours, I'm, it's not the biggest fan of it. Yeah. Like the, how kind of dry it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like that. It's like leopard. You could call that leopard. Look at that. Yeah, that is cool. This is winter wood. So this is winter wood on my, on one of, I think I used, this Ooh. is a, this is like raku clay or fire clay or something. And then what did you put over that? Indigo rain. That's, there's a ton of going on. Yeah. That is wild. Is this like some random mug that you just had? We're showing just my camera. Oh, we yeah, should they, be showing yours too. that was left over from my last fire. Sea salt inside and on the rim and then I put my copper red and my purple over it. That's, um, it definitely didn't work. The inside is cool. Though. That is cool. So this one is just straight uh, alabaster, which okay. is the same as winter wood, but it without doesn't the, have the crystals in it. So that got like the little micro crystals without the leopard look. Right. Without yeah. the crystals. But it's got those micro crystals. So yeah, Norse blue was inside and then the rim and then indigo rain over that. That's like something special. Desert dusk. Yeah, this desert dusk. Sucks. We thought this was gonna run like crazy. Yeah, I did. So this is straight desert dusk, and this is desert dusk over Matthew's glaze. You could do some pumpkins out of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that looks pretty similar to the electric kiln one, and I've never been a huge fan. Yeah. And it has never sold that well. <laughs> like, I've done a couple 
right away, whenever I get a new Ooh. blaze, I'm always like, oh, that's so cool. But then after time, oh, that's cool. That's got to be it? copper, jade, and strontium crystal magic, I bet. Number six. Exactly. Right, <laughs> I got you. it. Look at that. Just looking at it, I was like, that has to be this one? strontium crystal magic and then copper jade. Look I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess that this is... Um, that copper jade is pretty sweet in there. I'm going to guess that this is green tea over muddy waters or something. Number 21. Green tea over muddy waters. I got it right. And that is, I re that's like one of my favorites so far. I really like that. And that's one I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do that at home in my electric because that's really cool. I bet this is straight up sea salt. So is it just straight up sea salt? I like those little white specks in there. It's pretty. It's and nice. this is straight up indigo rain. Wow, that's kind of wild. It is. You really no. get a lot of crystals in there. Yeah. So the other one is green tea over muddy waters. We flipped it. So. Like that totally looks like your insanity mug right yeah, there. Yeah, that has none of the glazes in there. None of them. <laughs> uh, this one is just straight muddy waters. So kind of brown, kind of blah. That one's cool though. All right, so here's straight up um, copper jade. Wow, okay, so that's like an iron red. Basically is what yep, that is. Yep. And this is uh, copper jade over sea salt, which actually, if we wouldn't have crazed, so if we wouldn't have been in such a hurry and layered them, I think would have turned out really cool. Yeah. Don't you? <laughs> Something's making noise in that kiln. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Let me see the inside of that. Oh, goodness. Did you look at the inside? Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Copper jade over sea salt. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah, copper jade. Yeah, so. I think that's 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 a that's winner. Pretty sweet. I bet this is straight sandstone, which we thought. Didn't you think that at cone ten sandstone would be shiny? I did. Cause that's not shiny. No, not at all. It's tea dust, straight up. Straight up tea dust. Straight up. That looks dust. like an old fashioned like tobacco spit glaze. That's what that looks like. That's exactly what this was too. Just straight tea dust. I really thought this was gonna drip. That's why I only did one glaze. This is just green tea. Wow. This is strontium crystal magic under something. Look at this. Feel us feel that right there. I love I love glazes that are matte and shiny. Yeah, like that's a great combination. What is what it? What is it? Number eight. Yeah, green tea over strontium crystal magic. Yeah, strontium. Is that how you say it? Strontium. Strontium crystal magic. Number four. Props to Stephen Hill. This is just but straight up is, green tea. But this is Stephen Hill's original that goes to cone ten. He's reformulated it to what he uses now at cone. Six. This is copper jade over something else. I don't remember. <laughs> sea, sea salt, salt and Norse blue. And Norse blue. Okay. Sea salt was inside in the rim, and then Norse blue over that, which could be pretty uh, if you took your time to layer it so it didn't crawl. This one is Norse blue and sandstone, I think. But this one, actually, I remember this one. I did three glazes. I did green tea over Norse blue over sandstone because that looks really good in my electric kiln, and it doesn't turn out so blue. It turns out way more like turquoisey. That's pretty. It is pretty. Of course, it's, it's also on your B clay. Yeah. So it'd be darker on mine. Right. And I wish I would have just had one of the glazes go all the way to the bottom, you know? Or at least like a little, it probably would have dripped off. Yeah. Sandstone and Norse blue. Oh, sandstone and Norse blue. Okay. Yeah, I should have guessed because it's not shiny. And, and this Norse is number blue. one, macadamia. So this is like sandstone, but no crystals. Yeah. So it's, yeah, just matte finish. So those are all the Mako oh, yeah, tests of yours. No, I did my first. Oh, oh, okay. This was sea salt with my. My uh, soft, uh, like my royal blue that I use, it didn't really do a whole lot. It's a cool cup though. I'll, I'll enjoy using it. I'll have to look back at my Look videos. how blue that sea salt is on the inside of that. Yeah. It's like, looks That's like straight, real blue. Yeah. This one's cool. I like this one. I do feel like you don't get quite as much color out of it. This is one I, I tested last and I didn't really like the combination. Actually, this one looks better. This is like my, perp, my Strontium Crystal Magic purple inside and on the rim and then I did my royal blue on the base so I actually have different colors of blue dripping down into blue and then purple on the inside this is kind of blah I had this little piece of shelf in here because we had a couple that we thought might like really drip <clears throat> wow those are so cool I really like that ash glaze yeah. and on feel that on the B clay you should get a little white clay. Oh, yeah. It's pretty nice. Isn't that, it? is, that is pretty sweet. It's like a porcelain Ooh. stoneware mix, you know? Which I was. It is. Look how, look how creamy that blue looks. Yeah. Oh, Zero grazing. You're right. So this one fits so very this nicely. Is Minnesota, uh, this is continental clay, B clay. Continental clay, B clay in gas re reduction. Ooh, that is pretty. I like it a lot. That is like... too. Dude, that looks better than mine. That, there's a lot of glazes that I 
that look super good on this that don't look as good on other clays. I know, and you you run the diamond core tool on the bottom of this and just, psh, it's like so smooth after that. Oh! That, these are, I, these might have to be like my new mugs at our house. Ooh, look at that. That's a pretty dark purple compared to yours. Yeah. Here, look at this difference. This is like fire clay or something, or raku. Yeah. Wood fire 17, so it's fire clay. This is way better. Isn't it? Yeah. I looked, and that's Co continental like, clay, I'm calling you. Like the insanity mug doesn't really work on other clays. It has to be on the B clay. So sweet. But see, now I gotta test all the Mako glazes all over again on <laughs> B clay in my well, gas kiln. <laughs> there's a that is so buttery. Smooth. I, I don't think I can sell those. I no. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> They'll ship some to you. I they thought you were saying you'll ship me a mug. I'm like, they're right here. <laughs> no, I, I'm saying they'll yeah, ship yeah. you that clay. You can make yeah. your own. This bowl, red. Oh, ooh, look at that cup of red. It's, that's pretty nice. A friend of Aaron, who helps me wood fire, sent these rabbits to see if they fit in the wood kiln. And we fit two of the four in the wood kiln, and then we put the other two in the gas kiln. Had no glaze on them at all, but that one still has like a really cool sheen to it. Nice rabbits. He's a planter of some sort. Uh, again, I'll have to look on the video that I took on my phone because I don't remember. That's pretty. It's some Mako glazes. Something in there that like, what do you think that, what do I think those little specks are in there? You think that's from the clay or do you think, it can't be from the clay, right? It has to be yeah. from the atmosphere of the kiln or something. Yeah. And the outside. Okay, so these are a different clay. So this is the purple. Yep. That must be wood fire 57, so I could look it up. Either. Yeah, and 51 and 48. 51 and 48. So probably fire clay or raku clay. Really went hard on the trying different clays. I was gonna 100% make sure I got some stuff out that worked on this trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which so far we're like oh, you're 95%. Good. Oh yeah, it's good. We already peaked in the wood kiln, so we know some stuff looked good. Here's a couple, this is like copper jade. This is, I think this is sandstone over winter wood, which I've done before at home, and it looks kind of cool, and people kind of dig it, because it's white, but here, it just that winter wood gets so brown. Yeah, yeah. This is winter wood with I think Norse blue over top. That's what that looks like, don't you think? Winter wood and Norse yeah. blue. Yeah, definitely. I'd like to see all these combinations on B clay now. I know. <laughs> like, so. I know. Well, and like all your combos, like this, just this transition between the oh, ash glaze geez, I know. and the top. Like you do that on so many different combos I that I think it would look so good. Yeah. This is so buttery smooth right there, like that. I mean, as we always say, pictures don't do it justice. That is like, right, like, so smooth. you can't really tell probably in the camera. The, those no, you can the actually. Glaze, yeah, those two are the same glaze combination. These two are the same glaze combination, different clay. And this one is, in my opinion, far superior. Yeah, yeah it is. Cause there's, I mean, even there's a little, few little pinholes. Yeah, so these are kind of yeah. imperfections in this one, but also it's just not smooth. And this one just like, reacted perfectly to that ash oh. and i like the halo around the green ash drips mm -hmm. see the kind of like the gold halo around all the ash drips mm -hmm. that's another thing i really like so that's it i mean yeah the kiln wasn't technically full it was full of a whole bunch of tests so it still was like crazy the the thing is is we after we finished firing the wood kiln we both like went and took a shower and we came back and we're like we need to go ahead and like glaze these tonight so we can fire the next day so we can unload it the next day and then because then tomorrow we're gonna be unloading the wood kiln so like we're just trying to cram so many things in. I initially had talked about wood, uh, ga gas firing while John was here. Um, and I was like, I just don't know if this is gonna work. It's so much going on, but it worked and yeah. yeah. Well, Mako sending the glazes definitely helped sway that decision too, because then we could test a whole bunch of, that's right. so exciting. Like you guys know if you're potters, testing glazes is so fun and to put that many tests in one kiln is even more like yeah that was exciting. we're still going to spend like a half an hour here or an hour looking at all these again just to like so. right yeah when you're like taking them out in front of the camera you're like kind of not even really comprehending what you're doing so yeah. it's really like when we dissect it yeah and you so just to put in perspective you fire like one gas kiln a month probably yeah. and you fire like one wood kiln every once every mo four months four months yeah so so for you to do a wood kiln and a gas kiln in like both of those in a matter of three days. Yeah, it's epic. Yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah. yeah. We, we talked about yeah, if we had to unload this after we unload the wood kiln. I'm like, two unloadings in one day. I'm yeah. like, no, nah, it's a bit, because he's going to leave after we unload the wood kiln tomorrow. So yeah. it's just going to be too much. But Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you guys in the next video.